So let's first start off, and I'll show you a normal scan right here. Here, I'm just doing a comparative view um, coronally. I've got the transducer here, and what you can see is you've got the right testicle, the left testicle, and you can see that the grayscale appearance of the right testicle and the left testicle are similar. It's got a nice homogeneous appearance, and you can see that there's symmetric flow within the testicles. Here we have a patient with a testicular torsion of just a couple hours duration. If you look at the grayscale appearance, both testicles have a similar appearance, but here you see flow in the unaffected testicle, and there's no flow in the tors testicle here. So this is the one I want to act on quickly. Here we have a patient who presented after 24 hours of persistent pain. The patient's left testicle here has a homogeneous appearance to it. The patient's affected right testicle, you can see, is heterogeneous with hyperechoic and hypoechoic regions within it. This was a necrotic testicle. Now here we have a patient, this was the unaffected testicle, and this is a venous waveform here. You can see that we're capturing, you know, blood flow between these two calipers, right, markers right here, and you can see here's this venous waveform. It's just got a, a very smooth appearance to it. That's opposed to an arterial waveform, which you can see here, it's got a spike, but during diastole it gradually comes down. There's a spike, and it gradually comes down. That's the low resistance pattern that you want to see in a testicle. On this patient, even though he does have flow to the testicle, it's not a low resistance pattern. You can see that there's a high peak here, and then there's loss of flow during diastole. And additionally, if you take a look at the grayscale findings on this testicle, it's heterogeneous. There's these hypoechoic regions, which is part of the edema and the process of the necrosis of this testicle. So this patient has a partial torsion. Here we have another example here. Again, there is flow within the testicle, but it's a high resistance pattern, and you've lost the flow in diastole here. And again, looking at the grayscale, there's that heterogeneous appearance of the testicle. When you look at the patient's unaffected testicle, you can see a more homogeneous appearance, and you can see a low resistance pattern. That's what you want to see. Here's a case I remember from a couple years ago. Young male went to a clinic. Um, they ultrasounded him there, found that he had no flow in his left testicle, diagnosed him with the torsion, and then sent them to the emergency department. By the time he got to us, he was at about four to five hours of you know, constant pain. So I did an ultrasound guided manual detorsion. And what you can see here is that as I you know, opened the book, I kept checking and now I found that he had blood flow back. And when I compared that to the opposite side, this is more hyperemic, which is what you would expect after having experienced a torsion, but I was able to use this to guide when to stop. And on him, it took somewhere between 360 to 540 degrees, but ultrasound was really helpful here.